Okay, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to this series on bioenergetics. We've been talking about how the body is the mind and how the physical body takes on the predominant psychological predisposition of a person in what Wilhelm Reich referred to as character structure. And so we can make it very simplistic by saying, hey, you're one of these different types. And you could see I had my artist uh, create some depictions of each of the types that we've been referring to in both their psychoanalytical names, uh, but also um, based on uh, somatotypes or what I've been calling neosomatotypes. So if you look at this here, right across the spectrum, you've got uh, according to psychological language, you know, the language of, of uh, Reich and Freud, we got schizoid to the left, and then we got oral, masochist, psychopath, and rigid or phallic narcissist. And so it's a lot of fun. You know, this is not an exact science, but it rhymes, meaning it points to something. And it can give us some insight as to who we are as men, as people, as sons of God, if you will, uh, who we are, but also who other people are, right? It is a useful tool for uh, discerning an individual, uh, learning more about them from a glance. It's not going to tell you everything you need to know about that person, but there are clues. And I figure the best way to uh, really demonstrate how this uh, character structure, character analysis, bioenergetic view of the human person works is by doing actual assessments with real people. So earlier this week or, or late last week, I offered this bioenergetic analysis form, and um, I don't know how long I will keep this up, um, but right now you can get a free bioenergetic analysis from me. Uh, it's good practice for me. I think it's a lot of fun for us to practice together because you guys will probably want to know how to do this because it's cool. Um, we're not prescribing uh, medicine for anyone. We're not um, diagnosing anyone. We're having some fun with some very practical and interesting um, ideas, philosophies, tools, gifts that were given to us by uh, many, many, many different traditions. But we're been, we've been, you know, using the analytical tradition of Wilhelm Reich, Alexander Lowen, and so forth. So I'm not making this stuff up. Uh, I'm just sharing it with you guys because it's something that's very fascinating to me. So uh, if you would like to participate in this new series. Today, I'm going to start with our first one. Uh, go to the link that I will have pinned in this video. I'll put it in the description. And you're just going to answer these questions for me. It's just a few few questions. What, what I really need is a video submission from you. And as you'll see with the video that we'll share with our friend today, I just I need to look at you, right? Because if we're going to be determining who you are, right, or or, 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 or gleaning, right, because I'll never know exactly who you are, but getting just a, a glimpse of what's going on with you by looking at your body and answering just a few questions. Uh, I've, I've made a name for myself on YouTube by answering people's questions. <laughs> Yo, Elliot. So people would just send me their questions. I know nothing about these people. They would send me a question and then I would just give my opinion. And it was great for content, but I'm not sure it's totally helped the individual every single time because everyone's different. So with this series and, you know, what I'm offering at this moment um, in order to make this constructive is two parts. Uh, I will take a look at the video. I'm going to share it with you right now. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to just give you my first inkling, what I sense about this individual in terms of character structure. Uh, and then I'm going to share some notes that I took based on the answers that they gave me. And, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll take it from there. Uh, just a few things about filling out this form. By filling it out and sending it in, you are agreeing to allow me to use your picture. It says it right there. So um, by submitting this form, you're giving Elliot Hulse permission to share your case on YouTube, social media, and so forth. I put it at the top and I also put it at the bottom, you got to hit yes. I <laughs> put that there now, right? So, um, so we know that we have no problems. Plus, it's on YouTube, so you know I'm not trying to jerk people around. I'm just telling you the truth, what it is. And so, that being said, let's dive in 
And so I got a video here from uh, Oban. He's from Canada. And we'll take a look at his body and then we're just gonna, we're gonna hear him talk about his, oh, I didn't finish my, my last thought. Um, I wanna be able to answer your question about your biggest, the biggest, number one biggest challenge in your life. So we're gonna, talk, we're gonna hear from Oban about the number one biggest challenge in his life. And then I'll offer a, a bit more enlightened opinion about what might be helpful to our friend here or anybody who sends in in order to um, receive counsel from o Uncle Yo based on your, not just your, um, your question, but also based on who you are, your, your, your character structure and so forth, and your history, a lot to do with it. So anyway, enough rambling, let's jump right in. So I'll let this play here, it's a little fuzzy, just maybe because of my internet, but if you can get a look there, hopefully I'm not screwing it up for you, but you can take a look at what his body looks like. We did the front view already. Here's a side view. Right, and so what are we looking at? We're looking at the feet, ankles, the legs, the knees, the hips, the torso, rib cage, heart area. We're looking at the shoulders, the arms, the way the elbows hang, the way the arms hang. All right, Elliot, my name's Oban. I'm cool. So that was the that was the body. I'm gonna go back to the front real quick, and then I'm just gonna give you my initial assessment when looking at Oban, you know, I didn't get to hear him talk. So the way you speak, the way you speak and the, your face, the way your face moves tells a whole lot about you also too. So this is before seeing Oban's face this is about before hearing his voice and the way he expresses himself. I have no idea how he expresses himself, but this is his form, right? How does he function? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. That's why I want you to speak in this video. So, I'm curious, put your comment down below uh, what your first instinct is given what I've taught you about the character structures. You know, we'll go deeper into helping you understand the character structures later, but your, 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 what you know right now and what you see, what do you think? And you could use either the uh, new somatic terms or uh, psychoanalytic analytic terms. Now I'll tell you what I think. Um, my first thought was this man is very well structured. He's very well put together. There are no glaring um, imbalances posturally. Uh, he looks very healthy. That's my first instinct. And so given that that's the case, I'm going to lean towards the far end of the spectrum. If you remember, let's take a look here. I'm going to lean towards the farther end of the spectrum. Where are my pictures? They're gone They're here somewhere. So, to, so the furthest end of the spectrum here you see to the right is the rigid character, which is just a, a general neurosis, meaning the ego is, is fully developed. Remember I talked about pre-edipal or pre-egoic formations of these character structures and then post-egoic. So post-egoic or post-edipal is, is uh, when the body has, has already formed and is healthy, healthy formed in between the ages, you know, birth or conception and the age of four. So Oban looks, if you look at the spectrum all the way to the right, we were referring to that as the meso two, mesomorph two. Mesomorph one is the psychopath, really built up up top and really uh, slim down low. But Oban doesn't have that, even that sort of meso, that, unbalanced mesomorph. He has a very balanced mesomorph, if you see what I'm saying. If you go back, let's go back to his body. Very balanced. And so it's not excessive up, upper body. He's not building a lot of muscle. In fact, bioenergetically, we're gonna discover that there is some lack. Uh, energetically, he, he is, there are some areas where he's struggling, but I don't get that until I receive his answers to some of his questions and then actually watch the way he speaks and watches his performance. But just from a glance, the guy looks super healthy. Super healthy, super formulated, nothing glaring, right? Some of the, some of, sometimes it's very obvious what somebody's struggling with 
right away by looking at them, but you don't get that sense with Oban. So we're going to go to two minutes and 50 seconds where he talks about his, his, his biggest struggle, his big, number one biggest challenge in life. Now, before I, get, before I let this play, um, I have some information about Oban's parents and his relationship to his parents. I don't want to give it all away because Oban agreed to be in this video. His parents, not so much. So I may refer to some things that uh, Oban gleaned for me or gleaned from what he told me about his relationship with his parents without giving the whole story away, right? So we're going to listen to his number one biggest challenge and then I'm just going to riff right? and, you know, I think it's fun too. If you're listening to him and what you know, if you have any uh, advice for Oban, put it in the comment down below. We can maybe do this together. You know, I think it's fun. Challenge in life right now. My number one biggest challenge in life right now is finding my vocation, finding my purpose, right? Trying to find uh, what is it that I'm here for. You know what? I'm actually going to go back. Sorry. I want Oban, I want you to hear him say his name and where he lives and stuff. All right, Elliot, my name is Oban. I'm born in 1995. I'm, I live currently live in Montreal, Canada. Uh, what do I do for a living? I do, I'm do. i currently an Uber driver. It's a temporary thing, hopefully until I can find something better. Uh, how do you know about Elliot? I discovered your channel. Back okay, so you got that. I apologize. But I think that was important also too for you to see and hear. Let's get back into this. Number one biggest challenge in life right now is finding my vocation finding my purpose right trying to find uh what is it that i'm here for because you know i i'm interested in a lot of things i love reading about psychology gym um about the body about philosophy politics um history you know big history nerd uh, I'm, I'm a nerd about a lot of stuff you know and i've done many jobs also manual jobs and all that good stuff and so it's it's time for me to find, to hone in into one craft, do one thing and really uh, find what is that thing? What is my purpose? What is that thing that I have to do in life? You know, uh, another big challenge of me that I have is I uh, daydream, I guess I daydream a lot. I have these ideas that I never implement. I guess I don't take myself too seriously to do them. I don't really know why I don't make them a reality. Uh, what else should you know about me? Um, I love going to the gym. Gym is like one of those few things that I really take seriously. Uh, I don't know why. I, my one rep max uh, is 405 on the squat. My uh, bench press is 245. But for some reason, my upper body kind of lacks compared to my lower body. So I don't know why it's not catching up. I play rugby for a club here in Montreal. Uh, I've I've done many things landscaping. I've opened a restaurant for four days during a festival, so it's really like specific to that festival. At the same time, at the very same festival, I opened a, um, a, a cultural kiosk, so kind of managing two at the same time, which I really love doing. Um, I've done you know some odd jobs, landscaping, uh, warehouse work, and all that good stuff. Peace. So a couple amazing things that we learn about Oban just from that right there, um, barring his situation with not being able to find his purpose, the man is a hard worker. He he has no problem putting in the work. I'm, which I really. Uh, he has no problem putting in the work, so he is physically capable and wanting and willing to do what needs to be done. I liken that onto his experience with having strong legs. He mentioned that in bodybuilding or in lifting, he struggles with upper body strength, but the legs are very strong. The man is rooted. Uh, he's down to earth. Uh, the ability to lift heavily means, you know, there's, there, there's, there's, uh, there's life in the legs. Um, there's strength in the legs. But notice he mentions that his torso, his upper body lacks. And so the, his, his willingness to work, his ability to work, his industriousness and his groundedness s stick out to me. The other thing that sticks out to me is his creativity, his intellect, his thinking, his uh, daydreaming, as he puts it. And so there is an element of the schizoid 
right? So of course I, I, I nailed you. And I, my opinion is that you're phallic narcissist, like most of us, I mean, all of us in some degree, uh, rigid character structure, healthy, but uh, it may not be super structured in your body, although I do see elements of it, namely, I'll talk about it in a moment, but based on what you shared with me about your experience in life, there is a schism. And when I say schiz schizoid, of course, these terms, they sound like, you know, you're a sick person. Uh, the word schiz schizoid comes from the word schism. Schism simply means separation. There's a separation between your, your, your groundedness and your intellect, your head and your balls. They're, 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 the gateway between the head and the body is the heart. Right there's the head, there's the intellect. Just think about the three diaphragms I've mentioned before, right? The diaphragm here, or or even the three brains, right? I mean, the, there's a trinity in the human body that's uh, that's very evident. You know, the the eyeball, the, the the head, right? The head, the heart, and the balls is just a simple way to say it. Neocortex, cortex, and uh, our brainstem, medulla oblongata, right? Like. There's a trinity in the human being. And right now it's like the father aspect of your trinity is strong. You have a strong head. You have a, in other words, you there, I, I don't want to sound too out there, but there's divine connection. You can think, you can, you can visualize, you can, you can communicate uh, with imaginative worlds, right? A lot of imagination. You're also industrious, so we go from there down to the balls. You're willing to take action. You're willing to go for it. You're willing to work hard. That's balls, that takes balls, right? You'll do it. You're not gonna stop yourself from doing it. You do have, though, a problem with sticking with it. You mention a few things that indicates to me that you're lacking heart. And when you lack the heart, you lack passion. Even in your way of communicating your face, uh, the way you talk is sort of monotone, not very expressive in the face, not totally dead, but not very expressive in the face. Um, just indicates to me, this is not like knocking you or anything. It's just like, oh, okay, kind of flat faced, monotone, lacking passion. And I'm not so slowly sure that you actually lack passion deep below, but you hold your passion back because as you mentioned about your father, right? I didn't want to go too far down your father's rabbit hole, but he is a daydreamer. You mentioned that he's got a lot of big dreams, but never actually does anything, never actually manifests them. And a lot of the struggle in your family is your mom's um, discontent with your dad's lack of ability to take his dreams, which he continues to dream and always dreams, but never actually making it into something. And I'm seeing that same pattern, and I'm sure you're seeing that same pattern in your life. Uh, Oban also shared with us, uh, I'll, I'll share it with you guys in a moment, uh, a podcast that he did one year ago on a YouTube channel and never returned to it, right? And for you to have brought, brought up that podcast and show it to me <laughs> means that there's still, there's still some passion there behind it but you're you're struggling to manifest it you're you're struggling because of the lack of heart you're struggling to, for, to, to get it from here down into the reality down into the world you know your the way your mom deals with your dad and it and i'm not saying that they're wrong right or she's wrong i'm not placing judgment on them but she's discontented with your father's inability to make his dreams a reality impresses itself upon you. And to know that you're a dreamer, you said you're a dreamer and you mentioned that your dad's a dreamer. You used the word daydream twice. You said it in, uh, with regard to your father and you said it with regard to yourself. Means that there may be some guilt or shame or holding back your desire to take action on your dreams or stay consistent with your dreams. So. You know, as it is with all of us, we're sort of playing out our parents' drama. In some way, shape, or form, we're all playing out some element of our parents' drama. And it's usually a mix of both. Uh, we tend to do like our fathers, but think like our mothers in many ways. And if, you're, and if your mother and father are struggling, you know, in, in other words, their communication is tough. 
as you related, um, there's going to be conflict. There's going to be conflict in you. Also, you know, this comes to me, the head is father, but you know, the heart is mother. The head is masculine. The, mo the heart is receptive. The, 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 the head is, it plants the seed because that's where conscious ideas are implemented. Your creative ideas come from. But if they don't make their way into the heart, if the father doesn't make him his way, if the father doesn't put himself into his mo into the mother, <laughs> there's no baby. The masculine has to put itself into the feminine in order to create something, to manifest something. That's the the whole creative process is associated with something that is formulated here that then that takes root here in the heart. None of your father's dreams take root in your mother's heart. It's a, it's a mother-father separation situation that's manifesting itself in your body and then showing itself in your life. You don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but that has a lot to do with it. If you're Just imagine. Imagine your mother was totally receptive to your father's and his dreams. And every time your father had... Let's say your father was actually a manifester. That way she would want to do it. But let's just say for whatever reason, regardless of your father's results, if your mother was receptive to your father's daydreams, to his dreams, to his ambitions, to the things he thinks about. Oh, sweetheart, I love how creative you are. Oh, I love your great ideas. Oh, I trust your ideas. I trust your creativity. I know that you can do it. Like if your mom was like that towards your dad, when you come up with those ideas and you got plenty of them, you mentioned, you know, history and this is all kinds of stuff, science, all the things that you love, you would trust your own ideas because you would see it reflected. You would have experienced it energetically in the home that the heart is receptive to the head. But the head is not, the, 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 that's not happening in your home and it's not happening in your body and it's not manifesting itself in your life. So the real separation here for you is from the head to the heart. That's the schizoid part. That's the part where it may not show up in your body totally, though I do think that the monotone face and the monotone voice is an indication of carrying that schism because when you don't have passion because you don't allow yourself to love the creations of the father in you life is lackluster and your your self-expression is going to be lackluster and just the way the voice of your body right your voice is the voice of your body because what makes your voice your body is going to be lackluster there's no passion there. So you struggle with your purpose. You also struggle with upper body strength. So we got to talk about both because the purpose comes from the heart. Your purpose comes from your heart. It comes from your passion. And there is an energetic as well as life experience lack in that area. And so, you know, I could say, oh, you, well, you got to build up your upper body. But like you're seeing the manifestation of that lack of heart in the lack of heart or heart center, you know, chest, shoulders, arms. You know, really, it's the arms. The arms are the furthest extension of the heart. It's how we reach out. And so you, it's almost like your hands and the heart, they're on the same they're on the same nerve plexus. They're, they're the cardiac plexus or the brachial. It's all connected though. But brachial cardiac plexus. The hands and the hearts work together. How, the, how you know that is because when you love something, you reach out. When you want something, you reach for it. Right? Or you hold on to it. Right? You hold on to love. I reach out for love. Reaching out for love is energetic. But how does it happen physically? It happens in the same area. Reach out with the hands. Reach out with the mouth. Right? Expression, taking in, right? Taking in love, receiving love, and then, you know, going out there to go get what you want. So I don't think you're going to need to do more bench pressing, but more reaching out, reaching out. Bench pressing is pushing away, right? Reaching out and then taking in. Reaching out with your podcast, like really reach out, meaning like really do it. But in order for that center to be activated, you have to be willing to take in also. And when I say take in, I mean being receptive to your creativity, right? Like your creativity is off the chain. You're a smart dude. I see what you do and what you want to do, but you're driving Uber because you've never allowed any of the seats, 
the seeds to be received by your heart. There's no receptivity. So in order to eat, I mean, let me retract my statement there. If you're going to be reaching out or giving, I think that's the most masculine. You're, you seem like a very masculine man too. You want to give to the world. You also have to be receptive. And that receptive, when I was doing this, receptive, but it's more like receptive like this. Be receptive and trusting of the God, the Father speaking into your heart. God is speaking into your heart, through your mind. This is, what, this is the, the seed of creativity is a seed of, is a seed of God. That's when we're made in the likeness and image of God. It's our creativity. It's our imagination. It's our mind. That's what, that's what sets us apart from the animals. But when we're not receptive to that, when the father is not received by the son or the mother or the heart, right? Then there's no manifestation. There's no creativity. There's there, there, nothing comes of it because it's not emotional. And that's another thing too. The heart is emotional, meaning that, it, it, that a thought is abstract, but for a thought to become a thing, for your purpose to be manifest, there has to be frequency. There has everything in the in the visible world has a frequency. Your emotion is the first frequency. The it's like first grade to graduate to have the thing that you want. You say graduation 12th grade, and it's, it's like, hey, I have the thing now. In the art of manifestation or God working through us, the emotion is first grade. It's like, oh, I feel a movement. There's something, it's raw. But there's an excitement. There's a, you know, you, the, when you thought of making your podcast or you thought of doing whatever it is, those things that you're excited about, those things that you that you are excited about, they do move your heart. I, I believe that they moved your heart. Otherwise, you wouldn't have pursued them. Your whole podcast is about history. I'm not going to play it now. But your whole podcast is about history and all that kind of stuff. You do have mind stirrings that, that stimulate the heart. But the will drops it, meaning you don't stick with it. And you don't stick with it because the, the sense of, well, what's it worth, right? I, you, you're, um, you've seen it fall apart before for your father and not manifest. You don't know what it looks like to manifest. I mean, that's a part of it also too, right? You just don't, you, you can't do something you've never seen done. And a lot of the things that you want to, that you want to be able to see done would have come through the experience with you know the prime manifestors in your life, your parents. They made you, right? So it's hard. And then there's some guilt and shame also, oftentimes about outdoing the father, right? I you know you I know you love your parents and your parents love you. It seems like you come from a loving family. You say cold, but they're there, <laughs> right? And you use the word cold twice also. That's just another indication that it's love. It's love. The heart center, I can say the heart center. I'm talking about the cardiac plexus and all that, brother. But it's love. It's passion. It's love. Love is what lacks in the in the uh, rigid. And so I'm not just saying this based on what I'm noticing about you. But psychoanalytically, with the rigid character structure, they're holding themselves back from love. You can love. You just hold yourself back. Not in a masochistic way like the masochist that wants to reach out but then pulls themselves back, although that is a, 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 a um, masochistic way of being. I think uh, as, and now I'm just going based off of, you know, the typical behavior of a rigid character is that if I'm not going to be, if it's not going to be successful, I don't want to try it. Right. If it's not going to be the best one, I don't want to do it. If it's not going to make me a lot of money, I'm not going to do it. If I'm not going to be famous, I'm not going to do it. If it's not going to get me accolades or attention from women or status within my group, then like, what's the point? Right. And so you give up, you give up on it before you actually go for it because, well, there's a sense, especially since you, you know, your situation with your father that it's not going to work. So why bother? Why bother? You give it a go. But then you don't stick with it because the it starts to it starts to seem like ah what's the big deal? You put one YouTube video on your channel, one. You gave up very quickly. Doubt, right? Doubt that you could be as amazing that you could as you could be, and you're very talented. 
I'm just telling you based on what I see from you. You're very talented. I watched the video. You're very poetic. You seem to know your history. You seem to know storytelling. It was all pretty cool. Storytelling, history, poetry, you know, your culture. You're very uh, excited about your culture. You want to share it. You want to talk about it. But you're losing heart. So that brings us to what to do. Well, we could talk to a blue in the face. I can give you advice from now until the cows come home. It may resonate. It may not. But the only way something, think about that word resonate, right? Like if I give you advice and it resonates, what is what is re, what resonates? Frequency, right? Like if something is resonant or uh, like in sound, like sound vibrations or resonance, right? It's got to resonate. It means it's got to, you got to feel it in your body. If I'm saying something and maybe you receive it in your body, maybe you feel it in your body, but to be able to hold that charge is difficult for you because you reject it. Um, it's not going to get you what you want, right? It's going to be difficult for you to take my advice. And that's why I like listening to YouTube videos, listening to advice, motivational stuff on the internet never changes anybody. Very rarely does it change somebody. It can become an addiction too. So how do we take, you know, a, a stimulus like this, right? Oh, I, I want to do something. I'm willing to do something. I, I, I'm receptive to the advice, but actually manifesting it. It has to be a change in the character structure. It has to be change in the body. It has to be a change in the form if you're going to have a change in the function, right? And so rather than giving you advice or, or uh, cheerleading you or, um, you know, inspiring you, which I can do, which I like to do, which I do a lot of, I'm going to be very practical in terms of what needs to happen. So the very first thing, which is, it sounds very abstract, but I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit of some exercises that you can do, you know, and I would love to see how it unfolds for you. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just take it as we're running with it right now. So love, love, love is very abstract in a way. And it's the warmth of love that's going to melt the rigid, rigidness in your character. And that's going to come from the heart. It's going to come literally from the heart. It's going to come from literally allowing movement to happen in your chest. Like your heart, right? You know, because heart is like abstract sometimes. Like, what do you mean heart? Like, you know, like literally your heart. And so while you're doing the segmental breathing exercise that I taught in a video last week where you're laying on your back, your knees are bent, mouth is open and you're just breathing, I want you to pay special attention to the heart so breathe into the belly but also expand the rib cage laterally and open the throat when you breathe so it's uh, you know it would be cool if we could do it together maybe i'll do a workshop or something and i'll do stuff like this with you guys but you know i'm doing the best i can right now so you're gonna lay you're gonna open the belly so you're gonna think belly Heart. And so I don't know if you noticed, but my heart just opened, just opened. It just cracked, actually. My sternum cracks. Because <sighs> I've had some, you know, working on my heart and have worked extensively on my heart as well, too. So here, let me see if I can even see myself. I'm going to look at myself. Notice how my upper body expands. And then I op open the throat. Now, I'm not doing this, right? That's neck breathing. <laughs> and a lot of people do that. It's not neck breathing. It's, it's an expansion of the rib cage. Belly first, which you can't see. Heart. And you can almost see my arms move apart. My arms move apart. Everything opens up here. I want you to very gently. I got to talk about this. I got to teach. There's so much I want to share with you guys. Not aggressively. You're not, we're not trying to hammer your heart open. We're trying to restore feeling to your heart, which is very subtle. 
and all of us, you know, this is not just as we're all schizoid in a way. In, in, you, you know, if you follow what I'm saying, meaning our there's a there's a bridge that's broken between the head and the heart. And depending on your character structure, you know, as a as a rigid man, you want to achieve an achiever. And so it's like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to do the thing. But I'm like looking for the result. Like, where am I? Where am I going? Where do I get it? I want to get the thing. And you're looking for the thing that's that's going to get in your way. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, it's going to get in your way because it's not receptive. It's reaching that masculinity I talked about before, a masculine urge to go get something. The heart don't work that way. You don't go get the heart <laughs> like a woman, right? You know, it, it's, it's, you, you got to compel her, right? Your heart is needs, it want, it needs compelling. Right? It needs to be compelled, which means be gentle, right? Right? Some women like it rough. <laughs> Some women like it when you come straight at them. In fact, they do, but it's when you're compelling. If you come, even come to the heart in a compelling way. When I say compelling, compelling is always about come to me. Come to me. Right? So to compel somebody is to stimulate them to come this way. To stimulate your heart to come. Right? And a lot of times, especially if we've been disconnected from it it's it's first like if you're going to compel a woman right? i'm using the analogy because the heart is like a woman in a way you might look first very gentle at first it's just a glance right and so it is with the heart too you just want to be able to glance at your heart so while you're breathing a, a an emotional glance would be what does it physically feel like when i breathe into my heart is there a stuckness? Is there a pain? Like th I'm being very literal here. Is there a literal pain? Am I resistant to breathing into my heart? Meaning like I just can't do it. Like kinesthetically, it's just not available. I can't open that way, right? That's a, that's a muscular imbalance. That's a block, <laughs> right? So really it's just a first step is attuning to the heart. Are you even there knocking on the door of the heart? You're knocking on the door of the heart, which is very literal when I, it's very literal by being gentle with it and noticing, noticing, noticing. And it may take layers. Bioenergetics, it takes time. If you're not going crazy cathartic like I've done in the past, which I advise against, and I'll tell you more about that why, or, you know, these guys, I just received another email from a kid who took uh, uh, psychedelics. And psychedelics is fast. And that can be damaging. That can be damaging to the psyche. And there's a lot of resistance. There's a reason why there's resistance. We don't want to go with a sledgehammer opening up the sub subconscious. <laughs> That's a scary thing. Uh, and it's a dangerous thing, if not well contained. Containment is key. We'll talk more about that in another video. But you want to gently unlayer or gently, gently melt the rigidity around the heart. And that requires consistency. So doing the breathing exercise, I taught you 20 minutes a day, every day for as long as you need to. But I challenge you guys with 21 days, 21 days. You're not doing it like it's a workout, like ah, I'm going to go and crush it. It's an allowing and a noticing. It's very subtle. So you're going to do that exercise, but then, you know, a bio and a cathartic release for you, I think that would bring great benefit to you, which would be, I think, very accessible to you. Sometimes these bioenergetic exercises are things I'm going to ask you to do. It's like, it's not very accessible, although for some people, they're right on the surface. I think it'd be good for you to laugh more, laugh more, like really laugh. I don't know because I've never seen you do it, but the way you look in your face, you look like you might like do a half-hearted, shallow giggle when things are kind of funny, <laughs> right? And not really letting yourself go into the deep sort of um, ungrounded, you know, you keep yourself very grounded, 
ungrounded, uh, hysterical laughter that a kid would experience. You know, when you were a kid, you laugh if you've ever experienced this. You could lo- roll down on the floor, on the f- roll on the floor, lay on the floor, roll and laugh and like, uh, <laughs> like that crazy laugh that you're is uncontrollable. I think you would benefit from a really good laugh like that. I think that you could probably evoke that kind of laugh by watching something funny, (laughs) you know, something that you know is hilarious that made you laugh in the past or being around a really funny friend, but that's not going to do it in itself. There needs to be an openness to the frequency of joy, laughter, pleasure. And I think that's going to come with the unlayering by doing the bioenergetic breathing exercise, number one, that I've taught you in the past. There are others, right? There are others that you can do. And, you know, over time, I'm going to try my best to share them all with you. But right away, the, uh, what is the lowest hanging fruit is to use the bioenergetic exercise, just deep breathing. You could, while you're doing that, or shortly thereafter, while maintaining the openness, listen to something funny. Um, hang out with somebody funny or just get yourself to laugh physically. Meaning you could be in that state and then start doing a laughter breathing, which is like this. Ho, 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 ho. Almost like Santa Claus. Ho, 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 And you, you got to make your face into a smile too. Because it could turn into a <laughs> it turn into a cry, which I think crying would probably be helpful to you too. I'm sure there's some grief, but I think you would benefit greatly and receive some joy, which would bring some love and passion back into your life. If it was more like, <laughs> fake it. <laughs> You got to smile it. You fake it. But because you're going to be so energetically charged after, you know, a couple weeks, I imagine, of doing the bioenergetic breathing, that one day it's just going to be spontaneous and you're just going to burst out and you're going to be into te- you're going to be in tears. I think that's available to you and I think that would be the most uh, beneficial catharsis for you to um, to start to soften to the love. And as you start to soften to your love, you, you know what requires love trust? Uh, your mom doesn't trust your dad and you don't trust your heart. You don't, your heart doesn't trust your mind that, you know, it, it goes both ways, right? You're because the, the father is not trusted by the mother. The heart is skeptical. Your heart is closed because it's skeptical of your ideas. That's why it never allows it to be planted. And with that, I don't think you are at a loss for purpose. I don't think that at all. I don't think that you don't have a purpose or can't find your purpose. You just don't allow your purpose to be rooted in your heart. I think there are things that you want to do. You, you, I think the podcast, I don't know if that's too far gone of a, of a dream. I don't think it is because you sent it to me because you think that I, you, you want my opinion, I think. Um, you could, you could, if you want others to see it, you could tag it in the comments down below. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. Um, comment below. This is the way we'll do this. It's just... You know, most convenient for me. I don't think that you need to look very far for your purpose. I think you just need a connection to your purpose, a heart connection to your purpose. You're very grounded, meaning that you'll probably do what's required in order to dominate your path. Um, you know what you want, so I think your imagination is strong. So you can connect with the abstract version of what you're manifesting, but it's just not going to happen until you get that heart online. And so if you do some of the things I spoke about in this video about getting your heart online, I think your purpose will, uh, it'll be very evident. I think you already know it, Um, but you'll be able to be grounded in it and manifest it in the real world. So that's it. That's all. That's my opinion on that, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hey, if you want me to have fun with you, giving you some advice based on your character structure, fill out that form below. I can't guarantee that I'll get to you, but we'll, um, I'll be doing more videos like this. Let me know if you guys like this video. I can, I can usually tell based on the watch time, but um, I'm catering to a small few, I think, here. And, uh, and I appreciate you guys letting me know that, hey, I'm listening. And so if you're listening and you like this, you want me to do more, comment down below. Love y'all. Talk soon. Done.